Good morning, everybody, or good afternoon. Good evening. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, very excited to teach today. We're going to learn about energy homeostasis, right? Which is essentially balancing one's energy. Uh, the full name of the class, we'll call it energy homeostasis self-care tools for balancing and regulating your energy levels. So this class was inspired by someone in the group who said they wanted to learn about uh, regulating their energy levels. And they said something about too, about how they feel they're always in that like boom or bust kind of cycle. And, and uh, you know, what could they do to even out those bumps, right? How can you bring greater balance to something where you feel like you're always on or you're always kind of exhausted, right? How do you bring it back to balance? So I'm um, very excited to do this with you. Uh, some of you will be watching this later, so um, it will be recorded. All right, so um, I'm gonna start by saying, I was a workaholic for years. I can honestly say that I am not anymore. Um, I have to be mindful. It's a tendency. It's a tendency that comes up generally if there's some level of fear going on in my body, right? That I have to get something done. And then I go into that mindset. But I really have learned to um, <clears throat> cultivate a sense of calm and learn to orchestrate my days and my nights and my weeks in a way where I don't have to rush. I don't have to work. Like when I lived in New York, I was working 12 to 15 hour days, <laughs> like seven to 10. Uh, I definitely don't do that anymore. And I'm very, very aware of how my body has shifted since I've honored not doing that anymore. Okay. So um, I bring this up now because Part of, for me, living a balanced life is recognizing my tendencies, right? And, and knowing what my kind of knee-jerk reaction is in certain situations. So the first step for me is to quiet myself and to settle down and to ask myself, and it could be asking myself, it could be asking yourself, asking something outside yourself. It could be your highest self, your higher power, and asking from that quiet place, what do I need right now? What do I need right now? For me, this is, um, I think it probably works every single time. I was sharing it with a friend just the other day, and she was actually having a difficult time with a friend. And she didn't know how to articulate how she felt. And she was just feeling off about the whole thing. And so I said, well, you know what I do is <laughs> so I get really, really quiet and I settle down and I ask the question, what should I do? What should I do about this thing? And um, so she did it. She got really, really quiet. And she heard this voice say, walk. <laughs> and she went for a walk. And she called me later and she was like, okay, I'm confused. Did it work? Because the voice just said, walk. I thought I was going to get an answer to the question. Uh, I'm very accustomed to uh, listening to the voice. Um, that voice, I believe when I hear it comes in and says exactly what is needed. What do I need right now? Right. Or even if it's a very specific question about somebody else or a relationship, I believe um, the, the, the call that I'm getting anyway is from a place um, of what I deeply need. And, and oftentimes, maybe I don't know what I deeply need. Maybe a resolve with that can only be uh, acquired once I've gone for a walk, once I've taken care of this. So I encourage you, that's very first off, I encourage you in moments where you feel off to just sit quietly, settle and ask, what do I need right now? Okay. Um, and, and then notice your life. Like I said, notice your tendency. What is um, the thing you do that will move you towards or away something, right? Maybe you might find, I know this has been true for me in the past, that if something is feeling a certain way. I want to change it, right? I'm really, really tired. I want a cup of coffee. Um, or, you know, oh my God, I've had such a long day. That conversation was so frustrating. I just need a glass of wine. There's this way in which we're pulling towards something that 
will change us that isn't necessarily good for us. So just notice your tendency. And before partaking, maybe just go through that process again of quieting, settling, and asking yourself, what do I need right now? And hopefully that'll help illuminate something for you, perhaps even something else for you, something unexpected. So um, yes, okay. So energy has everything to do with honoring where you are, honoring and listening to where you are and not pushing it away or trying to force another state. I believe that is the first step to actually regulating your energy. You're not doing anything about it. The very first step is honoring. We did a class on acceptance. Uh, there's tools in there that can also help with this. How do I bring greater acceptance into my life? So really accept where you are. Don't force it, right? It makes me think of um, like I've even something like I have a headache. I can't have a headache right now. Take a pill. I did that for years with um, my PMS, right? I was like, I can't feel this pain. I got to take something to get rid of it. Not, and I've spoken about this in other classes. There was a day, the day came when <laughs> I didn't have any Advil in the house. And I actually didn't have to work that day. This was in New York years ago. And um, I, I remember thinking, oh my God, I'm in so much pain. I, I would like almost black out. It was so, so intolerable. I would take a thousand milligrams of Motrin every three hours, Advil every three hours. Um, and so I didn't. And it was profound. I've spoken about it before. If you haven't heard me speak about it, I'll just give you a tidbit now. It was as if I heard all the messages that I had been pushing down for years. I had memories that I remembered. It was profound. I mean, this has something perhaps also to do with like the um, incredible vitality that pours forth and the, and the detoxification also that is taking place um, when a woman is going through that time of the month. It can be really profound. It was profound for me. So, so for me, there is something about accepting where we are and not pushing it away. For me, that is the case. So energy homeostasis is balanced energy, right? And when you feel out of balance, that your energy is too erratic or too high or it just feels low and you have no energy, you don't know what to do, you feel like you're in a wasteland, <laughs> right? First thing is to honor where you are. So I'm repeating myself because I think it's so important. So honor where you are. So for instance, if you're feeling extremely exhausted, if you have the opportunity, sleep, right? You may find yourself asking that question, what do I need right now? And it's just like sleep. If you can sleep, I know that's not always realistic because we have work, we have clients, we have things to do. We can't just cancel. I mean, I guess we could, <laughs> but we can't just cancel <laughs> all the time, right? Whenever we're feeling we got to sleep. <clears throat> but I do believe we can honor where we are. So for instance, I'm a little sleepy today. Um, you might even hear it in my voice. I went to bed pretty early, but my cat wakes me up at night. So I got a little restless sleep. So I'm a little like not, not a hundred, not what I perceive as a hundred percent, like here with all the energy to teach my energy class. <laughs> it's like not where I am at all right now. So, so I'm not going to push anything, right? I'm going to be exactly where I am. This is where I am. It's sometimes... Often, if you know me, I have a lot of energy sometimes. I don't right now. So I could still teach this class. I could still impart these tools. I could still be present with you. I could still listen and respond. I could do all the things I can do um, and not cancel the class, right? I could still be here, but I'm honoring where I am energetically and I'm not pushing be beyond it. I do this because if I were to like push and try to have a great class and do all this kind of stuff and posture and all of that junk, <laughs> I would be exhausted after the class. Something would feel off, right? And I know myself enough to know if, that if I do that, if I push myself in that way, it's not gonna be a good rest of the day. And for me, 
on a very deep level, almost at the level of interoception, right? I like, I can feel my immune system just go, ugh. <laughs> like I just feel it's, it's sluggish and not as strong. Um, so, so I'm gonna be where I am and you get to be where you are and it's all good. Uh, so, um, oh, and I will say this about that and then we're gonna move into some tools. Uh, every single time I've honored where I am energetically, I am rewarded, I'll say, with balance. I am rewarded with the um, the ability to see that I'm exactly where I need to be. I don't need to be or do anything else. It's exactly right. And by honoring it, my energy just goes, and I kind of like, I get that little bit more energy. Oh, and I also get to calm down. It's this beautiful in-between so there's that. Um, so today we're going to start with a meditation, a meditation um, that will also hold a mudra with our hands. I love this mudra. I'm going to show it to you, but ultimately you're going to be holding it in your lap quite low. So you won't be able to see my hands. So I'm going to do it with you up here so you can see. Uh, you're going to interlace your fingers like this, right? They're going to be upturned. Ultimately, they're going to be in your lap. So they're really going to be upturned like this in your lap. <clears throat> so it's a little tricky at first. So I, I encourage you, uh, if you're watching the video later, maybe stop the video, um, futz and fix and try to figure it out and then start it again. So with these fingers that are interlaced, you're going to be touching all the prints like this. So I'll be touching these two fingers, these two fingers, these two fingers, kind of like this. We've done this mudra before. You're going to be doing this, but your fingers are going to be interlaced so that when you touch the, the, the fingerprints, you're going to be touching them like that. Okay. <laughs> it's a little tricky at first. So I have my pinkies. I have my ring fingers. I have my middle fingers and I have to actually go low in order to feel them where they are. So they're going to be upturned. So all of the fingers are facing to the sky. And then the thumbs are going to be facing towards you outward. To do this meditation, I'll be quiet for a little bit. You're just going to have your hands in your lap. You could close your eyes or lower your gaze. For me, if I'm feeling, this is a very good mudra. If you're feeling um, erratic, like you just have so much to do, and maybe you did drink so much coffee or whatever it was. And you just need to like bring it down and kind of re-enter your body, if that makes sense. So for me, if I'm feeling like still in my head when my eyes are closed, I encourage you to open your eyes and look at your fingertips. Okay. And that's what I'm going to do today. So I'll be quiet for the next minute or so. Go ahead and bring that to a close. I find um, one of the most interesting parts of, of doing a mudra and gazing at my fingers is it becomes for me extremely, it's like a humbling experience, almost like holding a child's hand. It's like the fragility of oneself, especially when one's fingers or hands are together. In this way too, perhaps at least right now, I felt it was like a cradling and I felt, um, yeah, I felt my own fragility. I felt my own vulnerability and that was nice to be witness to. Um, so I encourage you to play with that. Do it with your eyes open, try it with your eyes closed and see what feels best for you. And certainly 
Do it for longer. Do it for 10 minutes. Do it as long as you can. If it hurts your fingers, just adjust. Make it really, you know, it isn't a matter of like a perfectly touched finger. It's like, it's very quite natural, right? They're just all touching, right? They're just all touching like this. You kind of get a sense if I show you like this, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> um, so they're all touching and they're all back. <clears throat> so try both ways. Um, <clears throat> that that mudra is also really good for for balancing uh all that all um like water energy so if one is feeling extremely uh, emotional right the pull of the moon is really strong and you're feeling really really emotional uh this is a very grounding uh mudra for that so next i want to honor the four directions so if you're in my monthly self-care uh, webinar series, which some of you have been with me for like the whole three years, we're just about to finish the third season. Our last class is in December. Um, we did a class on something totally different. It was like organs in the elements or something. Was it organs in the elements? Um, in that class, we did all eight directions. So, you know, I love the Taoist exercises. We're going to just do four today. We don't have time to do eight. Uh, we did eight in that class, right? So um, remember we did um, we did the north, well, well, it's called the eight directional exercises, right? So we did north, northwest, um, northeast, east, uh, eastern, uh, southeast, south, southwest. It was like, we just went in every direction and did a simple exercise. So I, as you know, am a fan of action because I believe that my mind, uh, I not just believe, I feel my mind is able to relax when I'm in motion. So this is often why I like to meditate while I'm walking, <laughs> because there's something about for me, if I'm in motion, my mind settles more. Or if I have an action, if I have something to do, like I look at my fingers, suddenly, like when I was looking at my fingers just now, there was nothing else. I was feeling into my own fragility and that was it. <laughs> it's like, I wasn't thinking about breakfast. I wasn't thinking about what I have to do after. Now that I've mentioned that, I will. <laughs> but like, you know, it, it it really places me where I am. So I'm just going to read what the wonderful Dr. Stephen Chang wrote in the complete system of self-healing internal exercises um, some of you who are in my classes by now already have this book because I, I, I refer to it so much. It, this book is like falling apart. I've had it for so many years. So I'm going to read this to you and then we're going to do it. Eight directional exercises. All the elements of the universe occupy space and are therefore directional. Since we are part of the universe, we are influenced by space and therefore directional also. Directionality arises wherever electrical forces are present and electric forces are everywhere because they are the property of atoms. The electric forces are the means whereby two magnets, for example, are drawn together or repelled apart. These forces are also the means whereby a weak magnet is made more powerful. This recharging of electrical forces involves correct orientation of a body or rechargee with respect to the recharger. For example, the North Pole of a magnet must be placed against the South Pole of another magnet in order for magnetic induction to take place. In magnets, as in other substances, recharging is actually a reordering of atoms or groups of atoms so that electrical energies are heightened. It was after repeated experiments on the energizing properties of directionality that the Taoists developed eight directional exercises for energizing mankind. The exercises involve the execution of correct actions in correct directions. So I'm gonna show them to you now. They actually are done standing, but you're gonna get you'll be able to, to understand what I'm doing from where I am. So let's first just figure out what where the directions are. So right now, where I sit, I happen to know that, so the sun rises in the east and it sets in the west, at least in our hemisphere, right? So my east is, behind, is here, <laughs> my west is there. So take your left hand and point in the direction of where the sun rises. 
I'm going to change it a little bit, but it's like back there. So it's here. That's where it rises. That's my east. Now my right hand is going to point to the west where the sun sets. That's where my sun sets. I am looking south. Behind me is north. Okay, so that's your orientation. These four exercises can be do any time, can be done any time of day, but in the morning is really nice, right? When the sun is rising or even when the sun is setting, right? So what you will do, if the sun rises in the east, <laughs> um, is you'll do the eastern exercise, right? So I'm going to do them all facing you because um, I want you to uh, hear me and, 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 and see what I'm doing if there's anything I'm doing with my upper body. For east, you're going to stand. And I encourage you to stand right now, right? So go ahead and stand. And you're going to have your feet hip width apart, your toes kind of in a little bit. Your hands are just by your sides. Your neck is free. You know, you're loose. You're standing up, right? And all you have to do is be facing east like this. Facing east, hip width apart, toes turned in a little, arms by the side, facing the sunrise. And you simply will turn your torso one two, three, and you'll just do that as long as you need to. So you're turning your torso left, torso right, torso left, torso right, as long as you need to. You could do it for like, say, two minutes even, or maybe you just have about two minutes to do all four in the morning. So just do it a few times. So you're honoring the East, okay? Really nice if you can be outside. It's tricky this time of year because most of us, it's really cold. I'm like inside and my hands are freezing. Um, but if you can be outside, try this to the, to the um, to try. if you can be outside, try it outside. All right, so then after you're done with the east, you simply turn and face the south. Facing the south in like a hula hoop like gesture, you're gonna be moving your hips around and really, this is very good for um, reproductive system as well. But same thing, you're standing, feet hip width apart, arms by the side. And then when you bend your knees a little, it'll help you to rotate your hips. And really, um, I don't know why, I just had an idea, uh, like a, an image of if you had like a, pick, uh, a cake pan <laughs> and you were to take butter before you, you know, put the cake batter in the pan, you would have to put butter all the way around each side. It's almost like you're trying to get to, or the sides of a bowl, right? So you're really uh, moving your pelvis in both directions, left, right, or whatever feels right for you. That's what you do facing south, okay? So that would be south. Once you've done it for 20 seconds, 30 seconds, two minutes, as long as you need. Again, that's a really interesting exercise too, right? If you feel into how long do I actually need to be here? Not where do I need to be and how long do I need to make this so I'm there on time? How long do I need to do this? This is, it's not interoception. Interoception is really the ability to feel into, um, you know, like the processes, the autonomic processes that happen, like heartbeat, digestion, that sort of thing. That's interoception. But I, I think... I think of interoception when I think about tapping into my inner body and, and feeling into how long do I need to be here? What is this sensation? What is called for now? What do I need right now? It's a very sweet internal place. Um, so you'd be there. <laughs> so you're there as long as you need to be. Then once you're done there, you face west where the sun sets. And you can start in a different direction. I'm just starting with the east. You can start with north. So now that I'm facing the west, the west, again, feet hip width apart. Very simple, right? In every place, we're just standing. Feet hip width apart, toes slightly inward. And what you will do is take one hand after the other and just raise it to the sky, looking at the hand and back down. And then you'll switch to the other side. So it'll look like this if I'm watching my hand and down. And I like to breathe as I inhale up. And exhale down and do it with me now. Inhale up, exhale down, inhale up, 
Exhale down and continue on for a few more. And exhale down. So this one, obviously you could even do in your chair. I think about this a lot because especially on days where I, I'm in doing Zoom a lot or teaching a lot, this ends up being like, I, I usually do stand and stretch, but there are times where I really might be in the throes of something and I'm um, excited and I want to finish it. And so I might just like really start to, you know, do these kind of things to awaken my body from a seated position. Uh, so just know that you can do this particular one for other reasons, perhaps just to stretch at any time. But for our purposes today, for the four directional exercises we're doing, this would be facing the West where the sun sets and you would be doing that as long as you need. 20 seconds, 30 seconds, two minutes, 10 minutes, however long your body needs. Finally, we end in the North. Uh, the North is like, it's the one that's most different from the others. Uh, it's like shooting an arrow. So your feet will be further apart, kind of turned out. If you have ever studied dance, this would be second position, right? A little further out, toes are now outward a little bit. Uh, and from here, you would do, if you know dance, you would do a plie. So you do a slight bending of the knees, and then it would be like you're shooting an arrow. Right, you're taking it and pulling it back, right? And your knees are bending as you do this. I actually like to return to standing and then bend again with my arrow. Return to standing, bend again with my arrow. It just, it feels good for my body and it just feels like it has, but you could also stay just in that bent position. It'll, you'll feel it more in your thighs, but I like, I tend to be someone who prefers to move in and out of flow instead of um, being stagnant. If my body feels too stagnant, it'll start to grip, okay? So whatever is best for you. So those are, once again, I'll just repeat them really fast. <clears throat> the East exercise is where the sun rises, feet hip width apart, the toes are slightly turned in, and you just simply go side to side. When you're done, you turn to the South right? So you're turning to your right. You're going to then do a hula hoop like gesture for as long as you need. When you're done, you go to the west where the sun sets. This, you reach up and back down, up and back down. You finally end in the north, which is turning again, right? You're going clockwise direction, east, south, west, north. And there in that final direction, your feet are more apart and you shoot the arrow, shoot the arrow, shoot the arrow as long as you need. When you're done, I would like to return to east. I usually like to return to east and I just breathe, hold my hands in prayer or gasho, and I just be there as long as I need to be there. Okay. Um, I bring up these uh, directional exercises. I mean, I read a little bit about it too, but you know, in Western society, we don't, oftentimes we don't think about the elements or the directions as being um, uh, properties or, or, or um, in, in this, in this case, uh, it's situational, the body being situational in relationship to the universe as being something that can help us. Uh, but, you know, in Native American culture and shamanism, in uh, many nature centric uh, philosophies and religions, we see this call to interact with the earth interact with nature in a way that can help us return to homeostasis, help us return to balance. Make sense? Make sense? Yeah. Yes. 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 Okay, good. So um, next, what do we want to do? I want to um, end with hand reflexology and then um, I'll say them all and I will close for the day, right? We'll have a, um, it's a Friday. Some of you will watch later, but then you can move into your Friday. All right, so hand reflexology. <clears throat> I love hand reflexology because you can do it right now at home. You don't need a practitioner to do it to you. You can learn it. And I'm gonna show you, I'll show you where it is um, in my foot map. I'm actually working on the hand map right now, but it'll be, the it'll be the same thing because your big toe, right? Your big toe is the same as your big finger, right? Your thumb is like your great toe. So what is here in that toe print is here in the finger print. So if there's something at the center of the fingerprint, it's the same here as it is in here, <clears throat> okay? So 
we're going to work the HPA axis. This is particularly important because I feel when we think about regulating energy levels, it's most it, oftentimes it's because we're we have too much. We have too many thoughts, too much energy. We can't calm down. We can't relax at the end of the day. That's usually what it is when I hear from clients, right? It's too much and needing to calm down. So tending to the hypothalamus, pituitary, and adrenal gland, we're working with that beautiful, uh, it's like a loop, right? Hypothalamus, pituitary, adrenal, hypothalamus, pituitary, adrenal, hypothalamus, pituitary are in the head and hypothalamus sends a message to the pituitary. It's like, you're going to be, you know, uh, tell the adrenal <laughs> to produce and, you know, uh, you know, cortisol and norepinephrine, epinephrine, uh, adrenaline, cortisol, right? It's telling, the, it's, it, it, it's, um, it's sending the message for that to take place. So when we are with it in a mini map from a reflexology perspective, we're helping that process to um, better regulate, right? There can be an overproduction of cortisol or norepinephrine, right? So by being with it in this little mini map, the, the hope is that we're sending the message for it to send the appropriate amount, right? For it not to send the message too much. You're trying to bring it back to homeostasis. You're trying to bring it back to balance, okay? All right, so to do it, you have one finger. This is your thumb. With my other thumb, I hold my nail. This print is on my nail. This is my, this is, this is me holding my thumb. <laughs> and then this is gonna be the active finger that is pressing right at the center of the thumb. At this place, at the center of the swirl, that's my pituitary gland. So I'm starting with hypothalamus, I rock up. So I'm on the hypothalamus now. All I did was just, you, you know I do this rocking gesture, right? If you've been in my classes, I call it a press and rock or a tilting method when we're getting other glands like you know the hypo the, the hippocampus or the amygdala we do it in another direction here we rock up to the hypothalamus very very important it's doing many a thing not just asking the pituitary to send this message and you breathe into that and then you rock a little bit more down in central and you're on the pituitary And then you go in into the adrenal. The adrenal is at this pad, right at the center there. I'm holding the backside still, and I'm just pressing in, really relaxing my hand so I could get beyond. This is called the Thanar eminence. It's big and puffy and pretty strong, especially if you're a texter that uses your thumbs or you type a lot. It can be very dense. So you want to push in and allow the hand to relax around it. And now I'm at the level of the adrenal gland. And then you do the other side. Now notice right now I'm pressing on my right hand. I rocked up to hypothalamus. You could do this in your lap too. And I rock down to pituitary. And then I switch to the other hand adrenal. For me, um, I started doing it this way because it just made more sense. The idea of going here, here, and here, that that's fine too, try that as well. But for me, there's something about this loop. I've done this loop before, right? When you can make contact with two or three different points, um, I find it very, um, it just has more flow for me. So try it both ways and see what flows for you. So you're up, down, and then you switch to the other side. Up, down, switch to the other side. And just do that a couple times on your own. Get lower, I'm gonna lower my hands so it's more comfortable. Up, down. Explore when you're doing the adrenal gland when it's low here. I actually do it with my thumb, right? So it's like this because it's in my lap. Much more relaxing for me. And then I switch the other side up. Hypothalamus. At least having one to two breaths for each point.
and other hand, adrenal gland. And last time on your own. All right. Yay. To feel. It's something, yeah, it's something that I, I feel, um, it feels good to do for a couple minutes. And there's something about that rhythm of like up, center, other hand, up. And again, you know, it's very similar to what I was saying earlier. For me, I find balance and I feel more balanced now, right? Just from doing those things. And again, this is the irony, right? I feel like, oh my God, I have to have all this energy to impart these tools that I, you know, that I want to teach. But this is just my idea of what I think is right. <laughs> Why is it that I think I need to have so much energy in order to communicate something to you? Um, I don't know. That's something I have to look at. <laughs> but um, But if we start from a place of honoring where we are, being where we are and and nurturing a, a couple you know trying a couple different tools to help bring our energy levels back to balance we're good right i'm gonna um show you really quick the map so you can see at least in the feed and it'll be nice for you to see in the feed too especially if you're a reflexologist and you don't have my map i'll put in um the chat my shop most of you probably know my maps are all on Redbubble. My shop is Chantal C. Lucier. Um, and I will put that, I'll put that in the, um, when we post the video, I'll put that also there as well. So, um, so I'm going to show you the map. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. So that means I'm going to share my screen. Okay, here we are. So I'm going to move that. So, uh, yeah, this is my fit map. Usually it has, uh, you know, lines that indicate what things actually are. <laughs> but a couple people were actually talking about how they wanted this map clean like this. So I'm actually thinking about putting that onto uh, Redbubble, too, for those of you who want uh, the map without the um, without the words. Okay, so if you look through here, this is the pituitary. Mm -hmm. And as you rock up, you're going to get into the hypothalamus. Then you also get to go into thalamus, the white matter, the gray matter, and other stuff. Gray matter is actually like a pinkish gray, so I made it pink here. <laughs> so you have the hypothalamus, the pituitary, and then you move down to the adrenal. It's a little bit different in the foot, right? This is mid-level. This is like a little bit, um, this is the mid-arch. So it's a little bit higher, sitting right above the kidneys. Okay, so that's where it'll be. And like I said, um, in the hands, it's going to be here. You rock up here. And then I switch to my other hand and then I relax. And then I go to the other side, up, down, switch, relax. Up, down, switch, relax. Um, you know, if you are with a client, um, you can do it in a kind of rhythmic like gesture like this a little bit slower, but a rhythmic like gesture. Um, but I find teaching this for self care is really, really good. And, um, and the people I've taught it to seem to enjoy it. It seems to be a very calming thing. If you could do it for a few minutes, even, even better. So what we learned today, we learned, I have my little list here, right? We learned to uh, quiet yourself, settle down and ask, what do I need right now? And then just listen, don't do anything. Just listen to what comes, walk, eat, sleep. Usually it can be a pretty basic thing. For me, I sometimes will hear messages. I even will see certain images. Um, if I'm working with a client, I will see them doing a certain thing. So, you know, allow your imagination to roll um, the way your best self, higher self or higher power speaks to you is very individual. It can be through words, it could be through images, it could be through color, um, but the message will be clear to you. It's going to be specific to you. 
Okay. So quiet yourself, settle and ask, what do I need right now? Know thyself, know your tendencies, notice how you live. Um, and then ask, especially if it's something, if you're doing something uh, that is bringing you out of balance, ask that question, what do I need? And, you know, it's like, instead of what I'm doing, instead of the, the seven cups of coffee, <laughs> what do, what do I need? What, 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 not that you're asking about the replacement, but you kind of are like, what is the thing I actually need? Because coffee is giving you this like end result, but there's something much more um, primal and precious within that, that um, there's a call for that. Okay. So is that, and then we have our meditation with the mudra where you interlace your fingers, you touch your fingertips or rather the, the fingerprints, your thumb is facing outward, your fingers are facing up. You can look at your fingers, lower your gaze, or close your eyes and stay there. Try to stay at least three minutes. And if you could do more, great. If you find your mind is active, open your eyes and look at your fingers. Uh, next, the four directions, the Taoist exercises. I start east facing the sun, back and forth. I go south, my hips move in a circle back and forth. I go west, I reach up and down, up and down. I end north, north, I'm in like that plie position and I'm doing the arrow. I can return then east and do them all again, all right? I could actually do that 10 times, seven times. Usually with the Taoism, you know, we're gonna see, you could do a seven rounds. 14 rounds, 21 rounds, 36 rounds, something like this, however long you want to. Or you could just stay in a direction, do it as long as you need, and then move on to the next. Uh, and then finally, we have our hand reflexology, where we have hypothalamus, pituitary, switch, adrenal, hypothalamus, pituitary, switch, adrenal. Okay? And of course, what I started with is honoring yourself. Honor where you are, accept where you are. And from this place, like I said, I often am rewarded. <laughs> I'm often rewarded with um, greater balance. It's such a crazy irony. Instead of pushing beyond into a place where I feel I need to be, if I honor where I am, I'm, re I'm rewarded with peace of mind. I'm rewarded. I'm just rewarded with a sweet, sweet feeling inside. So um, thank you. Thank you very much for joining me today i'm going to stop now so you can move into your day and i wish you the very very best much love uh don't hesitate to reach out especially in our group if there's any questions you have and i will see you soon